Welcome parents to physics. My name is Mr. Huang and I am your student's physics teacher for this year. So who exactly am I? This is how I want to get started today. My name is Edward Huang and this is actually my first year at Hoffman Estates. This is my second year as a physics teacher. I taught two years of chemistry uh, the two previous years. I taught physics three years ago for one year so this is technically my second year uh, physics, fourth year overall teaching. Uh, I am also a math and science tutor and a gymnastics coach at Stevenson High School, but sure, I am sure excited to, to be at Hoffman Estates. So I graduated from Elk Grove in 2008. So I am from the area. I went to Loyola University of Chicago. I got my bachelor's in physics there. I also got my master's in chemistry. So I spent a, a lot of time, a lot of time at Loyola University. Uh, I got sick of the place and so decided to go to DePaul University for my second master's in secondary education. And with, that allows me to sit in front of this computer screen uh, talking to all of you and to sit in front of this computer screen and teach through this computer, which I'm not the most happy about, but uh, you know, what, what can you do? There is a picture to the, on the left of me and my dog. His name is Ghost and I love him to death. So the best method to reach me would be through my email, which is just ehuang at d211.org. This, this is the best way to reach me. I check my email pretty regularly. Um, I will almost definitely get back to you within 24 hours of the email, unless it's over the weekend, then it'll probably be pushed up to 72 hours possibly. Um, but if I don't reach you by the next, uh, let's say school day, uh, please email me again. It is likely that I forgot, even though I, I do my best to, to get back to people, especially parents. Please email me if you'd like to set up a Zoom meeting. I'm more than willing to talk and meet with you about whatever it is you wanna talk about. So a few topics that physics includes, well, these are pretty much all the topics, I guess. Uh, we have classical mechanics, which includes motion, forces, and momentum. We are currently working through the motion unit. Uh, acoustics, which involves waves and sound. Optics, which involves light. Thermodynamics, which includes heat and energy. Electromagnetism, uh, according to the name, talks about uh, electricity and magnetism. And modern physics, which includes quantum mechanics, relativity, and particle physics. So in our class, we will probably touch on all of these uh, sorts of topics, except for modern physics. That's more of a college, uh, college level material. So if any of your students decide to major in physics in college, they will probably learn about that. Um, it is unfortunate because modern physics, it is one of my favorite topics to talk about. However, optics is also very interesting and very fun to teach. So I'm excited that your students will be in class for that. One thing I wanna mention, and if you get anything out of this video, please let it be this. Please encourage your student not to get discouraged because physics is one of those subjects that doesn't come intuitively for many, many people. Um, and it is something that may, most people have to work towards in order to succeed in. Uh, students may not receive the grade that they're often used to, um, and that's okay. Because, it, like I said, it is a difficult subject, um, but the more you work towards it, the more you understand it and more you can succeed in it. So especially early on, please remind your student not to get discouraged. They just have to work maybe a little bit harder um, and they will, they will succeed and I will for sure help them get to where they want to be. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I wanted to say for this video. But you can continue watching for a mini, mini physics lesson if you wanted to get a a sample taste for how I teach, especially through this e-learning format here. So here's a diagram of the sun and the earth, obviously not to scale. Um, and here is some colored rays that represent the light coming from the sun. So the sun gives off white light, which is composed of all the colors of the rainbow. 
Um, however, just to simplify, we have red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue together still make white light, um, but this is a simplified version of what actually happens. And so if you're on Earth, a bunch of these light rays comes pretty much parallel because the sun is so far away from Earth and the Earth is surrounded by an atmosphere. This dotted blue line represents the atmosphere of the Earth. And so what effect does the atmosphere have on incoming light? Well, with blue light, blue light has very short wavelengths. And so when blue light reaches the atmosphere, the molecules and atoms in the atmosphere uh, interact with the light rays and the blue, li the blue light being, having such a small wavelength, they scatter quite a bit in our atmosphere. So relatively, they scatter a lot. Whereas green light, they have a slightly longer wavelength than blue, so they scatter a little bit, but definitely not as much as blue light. And then red light has a much longer wavelength than blue light, and therefore it barely scatters at all when it interacts with the molecules in our atmosphere. So with all these coming in at once, you have blue light scattering the most and red light scattering the least. And so let's consider two observers on Earth. So this person towards the bottom here, has the light rays coming directly up ahead. And so what time would it be for this person? And here I am sitting expecting an answer from a computer with no people on the other end. So it is noon for this person because the light is directly overhead. Whereas for this person, it is about one fourth away, you know, one fourth of the Earth's rotation away, which would be about six hours. So we can say that this is either 6 p.m or 6 a.m. So this observer where it is noon has all these light rays come in above and the blue light is being scattered the most. And so if this person looks off towards the sky in any direction other than directly at the sun, he will see mostly blue light. Some green light will be there and green and blue make a cyan color, which is about what the color of the sky is. He'll barely get any red because the red will basically just come straight parallel. There's not much scattering there. So this person won't see much red light. He'll mostly see blue, some green, the combination being cyan. Well, now let's think about this person. This person here, the light has a lot more atmosphere to get through than the person down here. So when the light comes through the atmosphere, the blue light pretty much all scatters away before reaching this person. Whereas green light, the green light scatters a medium amount. So a little bit of green light might reach this person, but mostly it'll be red light. Red light barely scatters at all. And therefore the red light will pretty much just come right through and reach this person here. And so what time is this person well, 6 p.m. or 6 a.m., which is on a typical day around sunset or sunrise. And so this is the reason why during a sunset, you see a red sky, but during the day, you see mostly a blue sky. Thank you for attending this physics lesson.